Acts chapter 11. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Chapter 10. Which Peter was come to Jerusalem. So Peter leaves and comes back to Jerusalem. They that were of the circumcision, the Jews, contended with him, debate, argue. They were not happy that the Gentiles were getting saved. They gave Peter an argument. How's that? Thou did wait, <clears throat> they contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised Gentiles and didst eat <coughs> with them. Guess what kind of meals Peter had? Blew these Jews all out of the water. All these Jewish disciples of Jesus Christ are mad because this guy went and sat with a Gentile. Now this is going to come up later on when Paul writes because Peter's going to fall in the same hand and Peter's going to sneak away leaving one of the, the servants of Christ. Oh, what do I do? What happened? What's going on? And Peter gets rebuked by Paul. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. He knew he was going to be in hot water. And expounded it by order. This is the order. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying. And in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheep. As a great sheep. It wasn't a sheep. Let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw a four footed beast of the earth, and wild beasts, and creepy things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter. Slay and eat. Again, they're a living animal. Slay them. Eat them. Again, it takes care of the vegetarians. You don't have to slay a zucchini. Matter of fact, as far as I believe, there were no dietary law of plants. If it was ed edible, you could eat it. You have to be careful with mushrooms and, and fruits like that, but I mean... Green beans, carrots, spinach, uh, celery, salad, that's good. No forbidden law. Only law that was forbidden was meat, M-E-A-T, -E can't spell. But I said, not so, Lord, for nothing calm or unclean has at any time entered into my mouth. I have not touched any of that flesh. I have not eaten any of that flesh. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, that called not thou common. This was done three times, thrice, chapter 10, for certain liberty people who don't understand what thrice means. The Bible told you. Peter told you what thrice means. Peter would know what thrice means because Jesus told him, Thrice thou shalt deny me. Thrice. Do you love me, Peter? Do you? Peter understands what the word thrice means. He's the expert. <coughs> scripture with scripture. And all they were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men. Two servants and a soldier already come unto the house where I was. Sent from Caesarea unto me. The Spirit begged me to go with them. The Holy Spirit. Nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren, three from Cornelius, three with Peter. Peter makes the seventh complete. We entered the man's house. <coughs> he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Now, this angel did not show him any sunglasses any golden plates 
Jesus Christ is still seated at the right hand of Father. He did not go to North America. He didn't show no feathers. He didn't leave no, you know, tribute to Mary. The angel of God said, get Simon. This is where he is. Go get him. Who shall tell thee words? Whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. He wasn't saved. Peter told you that. With all their devoteness, with all their prayer, with all their fasting, with being just and seeing angels, Peter says they were not saved. That's according to the Roman Catholic Church. That's what your Pope just said. Your Pope according to what you teach, said that seeing angels, doing devout, giving money, being just, all the works, your Pope, this is what you claim, that Peter is your first Pope, your Pope said you're lost and going to hell. That's what you said. That's what you claim. Did I read it wrong or did I read it right? Something's wrong. Peter said that that Italian angel seer needed to be saved. Everything he'd done, he was lost. If that's your first pope. But Peter's telling us that man, everything he had, all the character that he had, and he had character, he was lost and going to hell. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. As on us, Acts 2, at the beginning. See the two keys? What's the key? Is it that Peter will stand at the gate and say, Stiley Hayward, judging by your works, you can't come in further. No, absolutely not. Peter will not be standing at the pearly gates judging nobody. The keys that Jesus said, the keys is the Holy Ghost. That's the key. The Holy Ghost came on in Acts chapter 2, and the Holy Ghost came on in Acts chapter 10. Jewish people and Gentiles. As on us at the beginning, then remembered I the word of the Lord. Uh oh, Peter remember something to what the Lord said. How that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Oh boy, who said that? Actually, in the beginning, it was John the Baptist said that to all the people that came to him. Remember, and he also says in Matthew, you'd be baptized with the Holy Ghost and or with fire. And we talked about that discussion. So when John said that in Matthew, and I believe it's Luke, maybe Mark, John was speaking of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when he said those words. For as much then as God gave them the like gift. What's the gift of God? According to Romans 6.23. Jesus Christ. Salvation. Scripture with scripture, even though Romans 6.23 is not written yet. And we've already seen a place where the Holy Ghost is the gift of God. John. Oh, I forget what. It's in the Gospel of John. Peter saying that gift of Jesus Christ is now going to the Gentiles. So now we can have bagels and we can start having leavened bread. Now you see where we are now in, in Acts 11, Acts 10. We've gone from kosher, now we're mixing with a little leaven. The Gentiles are coming in. The Jews, as a nation, is still rejecting the apostles, still rejecting the disciples. There is persecution going on we're moving to the Gentiles now praise God like gift as he did unto us Acts 2 who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ same thing with the Jews Acts 2 what did they do in order to be repent and be baptized Peter said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ Imagine, nine chapters later, we learned that it wasn't just prepared to be baptized. It was to believe on Jesus Christ. What did the Ethiopian eunuch do? He believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, but if we take 
Acts chapter was it nine or the eight? With the Ethiopian, let's take that verse out of the Bible, and then you would not have a cross references where Peter says, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ." Now you take that out of here. Where is it? I think it's eight. Yeah, eight. You take that passage out where it says, "If Philip said, if thou believest with all thy heart, and thou mayest." And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you remove that verse, you get, when they come out of the water, uh, no, you remove that verse, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. They went both down to the water, both Philip and Eunuch, and were baptized him. That's what you get if you remove belief. So if you remove verse 17 out of 11, you end up with John's baptism as salvation, verse 16. You go right back to Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. Friend, that's not salvation. Philip, a well-known man, read to us, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Peter, for as much then as God gave them the light gift as he did unto us who believe on the Lord Jesus. Notice the belief. Their salvation. There are people out there who say, I'm saved. Really? This interesting man just asked you a question. Sure, what question? What saved you? I was baptized. I'm sorry, that's the wrong answer. That is absolutely the wrong answer. And if baptism is salvation, let, let's say if it is salvation for a city water system, a river, John baptized the Jordan River, a lake, a pool. I was baptized in a baptismal. I've been to baptism where they've had in the backyard someone's swimming pool. Ocean. Salt water, fresh water, bottled water. What water saves you? I come up from a church, they have holy water. You put your hands in it. So me as a little boy, I used to drink from it. Gross. What water? Ask me, if your salvation is water, which water? But if it's the blood, you ask me, okay, what saved you, Stalin? The blood. What blood? The blood of Jesus Christ, Acts 20, 20. The blood of God. That's what saved. There's no other. You come to me and say, well, I'm, bat I'm baptized. My that's my salvation. Salt or water? Because I've seen them be baptized. I was baptized whatever Pawkatuck water is. If it's city water or well water. I have no idea. I Again, I know people have been baptized in chlorine, chlorine water. I've seen people get baptized in salt water. I've seen people get baptized here in, in, in Florida Lake Park. I don't know what kind of water that is. If one blood saves you, and, and if, if baptism would be ordained by God as salvation, I guarantee by what the Bible said, there would be one water. But Peter and Philip lay to us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? There's nothing I could have done there. I'm standing amongst these people, and this house reeked of weird stuff. And the Holy Spirit came and they're speaking tongues to us. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then has God also to the Gentiles granted repentance of life. We are now halfway there at whatever kind of gauge you want to look at. We have moved all Jewish. Now it's Jewish and Gentile. Acts chapter 11. Don't you see the change now? Acts is not the book you want to darkly found your church on. You'll get messed up. Along with Hebrews and the Gospel of Matthew. They'll mess you up. Matthew is written for a Jewish king 
to a nation of Israel that would have a king, supposedly would have been God. But they said, no, we want a king like the other nation. Acts is written to something that's, that's kosher, goes completely unkosher. From circumcision to uncircumcision. And Paul tells one of his companions, hey, listen, you know what? Just for the sake of the Jews, you got to have that operation. There's nowhere in the law said the Gentiles are going to have the circumcision, but there are Jews who are going to be looking upon us, and they're going to notice that your family is Greek. You need to do it. Not for salvation, but because the, because the Jews know who you are. Now, today, if I were to sit down with a Jewish person in a restaurant, whether the witness to him or, or you know, he's a child uh, of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We're sitting down at a table. I would say, first of all, sir, would you be offended if I ordered something against the law? Your law. You would say, well, you're not under law. No, but conscience sake. Would you be offended if I ordered pork? And if he said, yeah, I, you know, I, I obey the law. I say, well, sir, listen, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Savior. We're not under law, we're under grace. But for the sake that you are a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will not order anything that will offend you. And I say, would you help me to order something that you won't be offended? And God would take, hey, listen, I'm, I have all liberty, but am I going to be able to talk to a Jew, have the opportunity to tell him about Jesus Christ if I'm doing something that offends him? And that's what Peter's doing now with the Jews. He's offended. You went in that house and you had some of their food? You, Peter? And Peter had the complete testimony saying, hey, I had nothing to do with it. God did. And they're at, whoa. God's now working with them. Remove the racial barrier now. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution, the steward persecution that rose about Stephen. That was Paul. That's the Sanhedrin. That's the chief priest. Not only was Paul involved, but they were also involved. They just they sent more people out than just Paul. But Paul had the zeal. Traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyphers and Antioch, preaching the word oh they didn't bring bounce houses they didn't bring vacation bible material they brought the word the new testament hasn't even been written yet and they're bringing the word the word's getting out the ethiopian eunuch is reading in his chariot oh it's old testament but there's jesus christ to none but the but unto the Jews only. So they had no revelation of Acts chapter 10 yet. Only to the Jews. And we're getting a reminded fact. Before Acts chapter 10. It was pure Jewish. That's a little reminder. What we're going on in the book of Acts. Acts 10 broke the barrier. Acts chapter 8. We, we kind of started shifting the needle. Ten, put the needle halfway. Where Paul says, neither Jew nor Greek. And some of them were men of Cyphers and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, that's a good place, spake unto the Grecians. Uh oh Now they're going to Gentiles. Move that needle from them to, the, to oh, Preaching the Lord Jesus. And we are not to curse the Jews. They are still God's people. You are to bless that Jew as much. But had the Jews not rejected Jesus Christ, we would not have opportunity to get in on the cross in the blood of Jesus Christ. And the hand of the Lord was with them. You mean going to those Gentiles? That the that the apostles the, the ten apostles were so upset the eleven apostles including Matthias they were so upset that Peter went to these Gentiles and the Bible says and the hand of the Lord was with them yes 
going to the Gentiles was God approved. Remember all the centurions? Remember I kept saying, follow the centurions, follow the centurion. Pilate was kind of convinced. That soldier that stood at the cross with Jesus said, wow, that guy had to be or was, past then, the son of God. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was at Jerusalem. Everything's coming back at Jerusalem now. The main the Gentiles are getting in. And they sent forth Barnabas. There's the guy that brought Saul in. Hey guys, Saul's one of us now. That he should go as far as Antioch. And when he had came, he had seen the grace of God and glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart, 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 that they would cleave unto the Lord, be disciples. Cleave, take part of the Lord, stick to the Lord, be a disciple. Step out and live. For he was a good man, this is Barnabas, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. He matches the same men in Acts chapter 7 that they say disciples. I mean, uh, uh, deacons. And much people was added unto the Lord. And then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Saul went to Tarsus. Barnabas goes, I'm going to go get him. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. He goes all the way to Tarsus. I saw how you doing. Come on. And goes back to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Oh, look at that. With the church. There's a church in Antioch. And taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. This is where your Bible comes from. Your King James proper Bible. The roots of your Bible, non-modern Bibles, come from Antioch. This is where the name Christian came from. Under Barnabas and Saul. And the church came Christians. And that title wasn't, oh, look at me, I'm a Christian. That title, you got not. Would they would cleave unto the Lord. That title was, you live just like that Jesus. Who are you? you? Who do you think you are? You Jesus? You think you live like Jesus? Hey, you're a holy roller. You don't go out to the bar no more. You don't cheat on your family. You, you stay home. You go to that church. You give your money, and Paul this, Paul that, and Barnabas this, Jesus that, yeah, yeah, you're nothing but a Christian. Blech. That's what that meant. And how dare the world apply that title to the Roman Catholic garbage. They ain't nothing but Christian. That Roman Catholic garbage kills Christians. And it's amazing today, even, even the church... We're Christians. You don't live like it. And if you knew what the name Christian was, you really wouldn't hang your head that high because it was an insult. It's an insult with honor. How's that sound? It's like saying a man got saved because he was simple. Now, I'm not making fun of him, but man, that's an honor. You were so simple, you believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, grow in the Lord and become wisdom, become knowledge, become understanding. And in those days came prophets from... Oh, we still got prophets. Prophets are still around. Revelation hasn't been written yet. From Jerusalem unto Antioch. Look at all the Christians. <laughs> Look at all the disciples. Look at all the apostles. Look at all the ones are now gathering in Antioch. And where do you think your Bible would come from? Here it is. Antioch was a Gentile nation. You already got your Hebrew Bible. That's the Old Testament. And 
And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit. Now here's a prophet, that there should be great dirt. Take the R out, you get death. Take the D out, you get earth. Death in the earth. Throughout all the world. Maybe this is when Jesus went over to North America. I don't know. Probably not. Throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Caesar. So go check your history. Look under Claudius Caesar and see what happened in the Roman. Roman. What's the known world? You were just told. Claudius Caesar. The Roman world. The Roman Empire. That's the world. That was the world at this time. It was a Roman Empire. Now, Christians are going to suffer. <coughs> There's going to be hunger. There's going to be famine. There's going to be no food. There's going to be no jobs. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, not 10%, you gave to what you could, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. We're going to help. Here is the missionary church helping its home church. Why? Because the Jews can't make a living in Jerusalem. They're Christians now. They're Christ lovers. They follow Jesus Christ. That's against us. If we follow them that follow Christ, the chief priests are going to kick us out. That, that blind guy in the, in the Gospel of John. They excommunicated him from the temple. So, with this great dearth upon the eye of the Jews that are now disciples and apostles, they can't make no living. They can't get that. So, the, the missionary church is going to send relief to them and help them out. Christians are supposed to help other Christians and not the government. Say, do you practice what you preach, though? Absolutely. I'm not going to tell you how, I'm not going to tell you when, I'm not going to tell you why. But Christians help other Christians. Which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Paul. So Barnabas and Paul are going to leave Antioch. They're going to go back to Jerusalem. They're going to send the relief money that they have. This is spoken about in, in uh, the Corinthians do it. The Corinthians say, listen, we got money gathered up to help some churches. Paul says, I'm going to send faithful men. To collect the money from you, you better have it. You'll be bragging about you. And Barnabas and Saul are going to come back to the Jerusalem church and they're going to give a missionary report about what's happening in Antioch and the places where they're at. How's that? So, where do you get missionaries coming back to your home church to tell us, hey, what's going on? You saw it in Acts chapter 11. And what is the event in Acts chapter 11 that's causing these missionaries to come home and report? You're going to Gentiles. You're going to Jews. You're going all over the world. The gospel is now. Poof. I don't know how many. No, it's got to be 360 degrees of a compass. Yeah, that's right. That gospel is going 360 degrees out. You know where Paul's going to go when, he, when we start getting to Paul and his missionary journeys? He's going to go to seaports. And he's going to start churches at seaport. Well, you know what happens at those seaports? The gospel gets preached. It gets out to sailors. Sailors go out all over the world. And they get to caravans. Caravans go out all over the world. For gold, for spices, for merchandise. You've already had this happen in Matthew and Luke. You had a bunch of caravan come in. And they presented gold, silver, and frankincense. And they packed up their goods and they went home. And on the way home, when they stopped at different camps, they would say, we saw the king of the Jews. We followed his star. Did they or did they not? Did not the Ethiopian eunuch, he starts heading south to Ethiopia. When he's stopping to get at the roadside to get McDonald's or whatever on his way to Ethiopia when he gets in Ethiopia is he not stopping to say hey I met a man Philip I had no idea where he came from man he stepped in that thing look this is what he read this is my notes look I highlighted I marked the Word of God 
I believed on Jesus Christ, then I was baptized. You can too. This is about Jesus. Man, he brought me that water and boom. I never saw him since. What do you guys say, Mr. Ethiopian? I got joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. Remember what happened when he got back to, uh, what was her name? Cadence? You met, was she happy about this guy, or did she hate this guy preaching Jesus all over? The, you say impossible? <clears throat> Wasn't one of the women that followed Jesus named Joanna, and her husband worked in the government? I'm excited, because the gospel's getting out. I like that. And all these people we're reading about that believe on Jesus, we're going to meet them one day. We're going to see them one day. And can you imagine? Can you imagine you're a worldly Christian. Oh, I'll just say, hi, right, we're from Antioch. You know, you're in heaven. Hi, right, we're from Antioch. What state was that in? Whoa. Really? And you have God say, okay, you record yourself to say you were a Christian 536 times. Yeah, so what, Lord? Will you get me the foolish person in Antioch to speak up, please? Yeah, Lord, this guy, I mean, he was, just, he was born this way, Lord, but he trusted you. Uh, do you step up here and explain to these idiots what Antioch and what Christianity was? See, I'm going to know these people by studying the Bible. I may not know their names. We're going to say, hey, Antioch, you were first called Christians, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. We're, it's in the book. So what was Paul like? Ooh, you, sit down. We'll talk to you about Paul. He lived with them how many years? A whole year. These people are all going to be gathered for one gathering. For what? For the Lord Jesus Christ. 